Buenas tardes, buenos días a todo el mundo. Bienvenidos. Good afternoon, good morning to you all. Welcome to this first virtual dialogue titled Tools and Policies to Promote Open Access, Open Data and Open Education, which has been organized by the LAC, EU LAC and Op Real Global. Some data that are quite uh, useful about housekeeping uh, today in this session. The first one is that today we have a simultaneous interpreting service from Spanish into English and the other way around. Underneath on your bottom bar, you can click the option and the language channel that you might need. It's a globe icon at the bottom bar. So if uh, you're going to be using both languages, uh, it's best obviously to use one of the two languages so that interpreters will not get mixed up. As for the rest of colleagues who will be logging in and listening to this first dialogue today, please let me tell you that together with the EU LAC Foundation, we have organized a series of two dialogues today and tomorrow. These debates have as the main goal uh, to showcase policies, practices, and tools to promote open science between Latin America, the Caribbean, and the European Union with the final goal of developing and drafting a little conclusion document, which uh, the drafting will be done by our colleagues of the U Ibero America Institute in Berlin, which will be used as a framework of the analysis of the next World Higher Education Conference organized by the UNESCO and which will be uh, take place in Barcelona in May and where your, your luck will have representatives of Asia, uh, Africa, Europe, etc., to discuss, to talk about open science in the framework of the conclusions of today's dialogues and tomorrow's too. I would like to mention, um, I would like to thank to the government in Argentina, representing the pro tempore, um, your lack. Um, and also the re representative, um, Ms. Karina Pombo, in representation of the Minister Filmos, also the European Union, and for their support and the agency uh, of the German government. Thank you all for your support. And having said that, thank you to all of you for being here today, speakers and the audience members. Now I will introduce Dr. Anna Barrera, who will be our moderator. So Anna, you have the floor. On my side, uh, Anna Barrera is my name. I'm a senior program coordinator at the ULAC Foundation based in Hamburg, Germany. A warm welcome to everyone who is following us, either through the Zoom platform or other uh, devices. Um, and uh, for this inauguration session, uh, we, ha we have uh, uh, invited several persons to speak um, a little bit. On the one hand, it will be Ramon Torrent, uh, the president of uh, Obreal Global. Then we will have as a speaker, uh, Dr. Adrian Bonilla, who is executive director of the ILAC Foundation. And then uh, we will hear three people who will uh, be uh, outlining their programs, their policies, uh, in, in, referring to the specific region they represent or the, the place uh, where they work on open science in general, before then passing to a first rather thematic session. So I now um, hand out the word to Ramon Torrent. Mm. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, buenas tardes. Mis palabras serán muy breves. Porque... Good afternoon. My session will be, my introduction will be brief because I shall leave the time to my dear friend Adrián Morilla. I would only like to thank once again 
that Nicolas Patrici and Ana Barrera have already mentioned. First of all, because they're always the most important ones, and to all participants who are joining us to this session and who wait to share the conclusions and uh, information of our debate, thank you again to all the speakers and of course, to the political authorities um, who have been so helpful to open this session, to make it happen, the General Director of Research of the Catalan government, the Generalitat, which is one of the institutions promoting and holding soon the WHEC in seven weeks time in Barcelona, Mr. Jaime Garcia Pallares and also Ms. Cristina Russo, who is the director of the European Union research coordinating regarding global and inter-globalization issues, and specifically Karina Pombo. Ms. Pombo is the representative today of the Argentinian government who are holding and presiding the CELAC, the community of Latin American and Caribbean states. Thank you all. And having said that, I shall allow Mr. Bonilla to pre present and introduce to you these sessions on open science. Thank you very much, Ramon. I would like to salute you all, to everyone here, speakers, and specifically to our friends representing today the European Union and also the Republic of Argentina, the two entities that co-preside the EU LAG Foundation, which is an international and intergovernmental institution promoting and making visible and interweaving uh, liaison and relationships between the governments of Europe, Latin America, and the Caribbean, and which has the tradition of shared objectives, uh, work practices, and policies with OBREAL, which is now OBREAL global, these uh, ob observatory institution of uh, India, Africa, the newly welcomed uh, areas uh, in our association. And it's a great pleasure for us to organize these events because we've been really busy these latest months. The idea of this event is to work uh, and talk about open science, thinking about the open access logics as an indicator which is non specifically of development and prosperity, but of human development. And given this logic, when we think about open science towards knowledge and so knowledge sources and instruments such as education, as a fact that also indicates inclusion logics, democratization logics, and also, unfortunately, exclusion logics. So having access to information, having access to knowledge, having access to science is held within the framework of the uh, sustainable develop development goals, which are the basis of Europe, Latin America, and the Caribbean, and which also is situated or located within this common policy of these two regions, which is mainly characterized recently by the importance that social cohesion has taken in the Europe, Amer Latin America, and Caribbean's agenda. It's a social cohesion instrument which takes us back to issues such as equality of opportunity and equity of resource distribution, which also has to do with the production of knowledge. 
So these uh, asymmetries, differences characterizing our societies and Latin American societies in uh, terms of access, they have different uh, reasons we could analyze, structural reasons that have to do with availability of resources, with economy and with the form these economies uh, take place in international relationships, but also policies and issues related to systemic topics that have to do with the form of how social forms and pol 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 politics and legal issues nationally, but also internationally, which also characterize the distribution of resources like open access to knowledge and also the agency of cultural issues, which have to do with the interest of specific actors or stakeholders when it comes to knowledge production and which are expressed in dynamics, denouncing the intellectual property, uh, legislation or the discrimination of those what well, those issues that are built as a, as a scientist or non-scientist the way that in a society sometimes is denounced as something uh, valid in given this perspective today's event is looking to identify different scenarios of these two countries and societies of Latin America, Europe and the Caribbean, and also the advances that we've made in this direction, which is the main objective of human development. We're trying to identify good practices also and public policies in the field of tools, of uh, tools of access that uh, tend to the different policies that from the governments are being built and this event in, in the different speeches that we will have, we try to analyze the perspectives of those people with experience and also with the decision-making capacity, but that also actors in the disclosure of knowledge. And we also have another part of a multi-regional perspective in terms of the relations between Latin America, Europe and the Caribbean with a perspective coming from the India. And so I believe that these two sessions that are we are beginning now today will be very fruitful. And I think that it's necessary to thank all the participants for being here. And again, especially to thank the authorities or representations of the European Union and the pro tempore presidency of the community of Latin America, uh, Latin American and Caribbean states that are finally the aim, the objective of the reflections that uh, we will be doing today in this session. So thank you. Thank you. I am uh, watching at the time and I was informed that Maria Cristina Russo would have to leave very early this inauguration session. So I would propose that we would first um, invite her to speak. Maria Cristina Russo is Director for Global Approach and International Cooperation in Research and Innovation at the DG Research and Innovation of the European Commission. And we are very much delighted to have her on board. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Anna, and good morning to everyone. Thanks for changing the program, the agenda. It's true, I have a meeting at 4.30 Brussels time. So I just wanted to say a few words on from the side of the European Union to thank the EU LAC Foundation and Obriel Grupal to take this for taking this initiative i've seen that there are many colleagues and friends participating in this initiative and i really liked to hear the words of dr adrian bonilla it was great uh, all the words that you said and also for me it's very important to participate in the initiative with the pro tempore presidency of argentina silac and also thanks Karina, for your participation and for letting me speak uh, beforehand. 
I remember warmly my last visit to Buenos Aires in 2019 to participate in a meeting of the Joint Committee of uh, Science and Technology and Innovation Ministry, throughout which we also discussed around open science. And in fact, open science is one of the main topics that we discuss with the MISID and also with Argentina. Argentina, in Argentina, open science has a great way to go in this region, Latin America and the Caribbean. So in this sense, I would love to continue with these debates in more detail with Argentina and also to speak about the regional field, the regional dimension. I'm going to speak in English now. So I would like to say also that from the Argentinian side, moving to the relations between the EU and CELAC countries, we had a very important meeting in 2020 at the level of senior officials with also the participation of our um, ministers and the commissioner of the European Union. And there we have adopted a roadmap for cooperation between the EU and CELAC. And uh, within uh, this, uh, the conclusion of this meeting and within the, this roadmap, we have highlighted the common interest from the EU and the CELAC region in order to continue to work on open science, open science being one on the underlying value of our international cooperation in research and innovation. Many of you might have already know or might have already heard me speaking about the global approach to research and innovation. The global approach to research and innovation is the new strategy for international cooperation, which has been adopted by the European Commission last year. Uh, which in fact states the fact that international cooperation in research and innovation is based on values and principles. Uh, let me say that uh, there is not a better moment than now wh when we are facing uh, a tremendous war in Europe that uh, we really need to state our commitments to values and principles in our international cooperation and in the, uh, in the, uh, in, in the, in, in the international cooperation, uh, also in sectorial areas as research and innovation. Um, I think that I can say very confidently that within the principles of international cooperation or, uh, at the level of the EU in science and innovation, open science, it is at its core. So we want to continue to work with the, uh, with, the, with the CELAC region, with the Argentinian Potempore Presidency in order to enhance open science as a building block of our cooperation. In this framework, I would conclude by saying that we, we are setting up a multilateral dialogue with, the, with those uh, countries and regions with which we have a strategic partnership in the framework of research and innovation at EU level, which in fact include the CELAC area, as I mentioned, and Argentina, as I mentioned, and within this multilateral discussion, we would like to further deepen the, uh, the issues related to, to open science. In this respect, I think that the seminar that uh, you are organizing is very pertinent, and uh, I think it will be important as, a, as, a, as a bringing elements to this multilateral dialogue that we would like to, to organize. With those words, I would like to thank you very much. And I would like to wish you a very good uh, discussion and looking forward to be informed about the outputs of the seminar. Muchísimas gracias. Eh, os ruego una buena continuación. Thank you very much, Ms. Russo. Be assured that we will let you know uh, about the results and send you also the document that will be prepared by our partner, the Ibero-American Ibero Institute in Berlin. Um, and now I would like to uh, leave the floor to Ms. Karina Pombo, National Director of Science Policy Promotion and International Affairs of the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation of the um, Argentine Republic. We also would like to state that um, Argentine right now um, holds the presidency pro tempore of the CELAC, of the community of Latin American and Caribbean states. So she will uh, speak on behalf uh, not only of Argentina, but also uh, on behalf of the entire region. Karina, the floor is yours. 
Muchísimas gracias. Well, Muy thank you. Noche. Thank you very much and good evening in Europe and good morning in Latin America and the Caribbean. It's a great pleasure for me to be here present in this meeting. I'd like to thank mainly the EU LAC Foundation for the invitation, also Obrel Global, and also I would like to thank Pr Professor Ramon Torren for his presentation, also Dr. Adrián Bonilla, and also my friend Maria Cristina Russo, with whom I've been discussing for a long time ago about uh, main topics between European Union and Argentina. Uh, we will also have a multilateral meeting very soon. And now Argentina has pro temporary pres presidency in science and innovation within the CELAC. I would, I hope to contribute to the cooperation in this bi-regional dialogue in such an important topic as the open science where Argentina is concerned constantly or is tries to make this topic to be in the agenda of the international cooperation. The evolution of open science as a concept has some decades already of experience, and it's these past times that it has reached a phase of consolidation. Within the main drivers, we find mainly the pandemic, COVID-19, that focus on the need of making accessible scientific literature and also the urgency of promoting open ways of collaboration so that scientific progress is finally a human right. The recommendation of open science from the UNESCO passed in November 2021 proposes a general definition, of principles, values and actions to create a proper environment for open science. The recommendation poses or the need to foster responsible practices in terms of assessment of research that uh, incentivize quality science and also acknowledges diversity of activities and missions of the universities and also proposing an opening to diversity in ways of knowledge and also a, a, a higher approach of science towards society throughout citizen science. Argentina participated in the process of building, of, of elaborating of this recommendation. We were involved in the consultation process developed throughout 2020. We also were hold, held the presidency of the experts committee uh, in 2020, 2021. Also, we made a national consultation to um, receive suggestions for the project, for the draft project. We also participated in the national consultation organized by the office of Montevideo of the, from the UNESCO. And I was also want to mention Fernanda Bella. She has been very active, uh, very workative in the participation of Argentina. Our country since 2013 has 27 899 law of open access that is being implemented in all the bodies of national scientific um, bodies. The national system of repositories is coordinated by an expert committee of the country. We also have an open science and citizens committee that works in the field or in the scope of this ministry and has also a uh, resolution from the ministry in the international process of this uh, debate before the passing from the UNESCO, the recommendation of open science showed the historical inequalities that affect the universal access to the benefits of science. As we see in our daily life throughout the effects of the pandemic, the economic inequalities and they also affect the possibilities of resilience of each society. Therefore, one of the main concerns uh, around the debates of open science is the gap between uh, the most technological advanced countries and those that are poorest with a precarious 
technology infrastructure. In this context, the unilateral development of dominant countries would not only increase the inequalities in terms of access to science, but also would activate different ways of um, commercialization of data coming from the, from the outside. One of the consequences of this lack of access to open science are the publications that are changing very rapidly the business models uh, in terms of how the authors get paid. These tendencies promoted by the different publishing houses show the, the and they work there are studies that already measure quantitatively what it means this the, this cause in different countries such as Colombia, Argentina, Brazil, and Chile, and also certified the tendency to uh, go down. Together with these risks and asymmetries, some other threads refer to biodiversity and multilingualism. Effectively, these open signs within the mainstream and tackled or too tied by globalization could force or take English as the only sort of uh, mother uh, lingua or franca lingua. So this is why it's very important to include reading and books typically more developed by the humanities, as well as we need to support the models of publication by the academic world without um, benefits, benefit goals, or, or uh, this is why multilingualism is basic, not only in sciences, but also in the academia. In Latin America, we suggest collaborative uh, modus operandi, and we have thousands of scientific articles and newspapers, those that offer public access to information. Now we should find the new paths to um, foster this visibility, respecting the needs for each academic community and each institution. This is the main challenge we face to promote open science, which is relevant from the societal and which is active in the world uh, academic activity. Once again, thank you so much for having invited the Ministry of Science Innovation of Argentina for our participation, and we do hope that we shall com continue working in our pro tempore chair. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Combo. Uh, thank you very much for your important words. Um, in the chat from Ramon Torrent, he uh, was apologizing that he, uh, well, <laughs> that oh, clear. no problem, no right. problem. <laughs> um, please accept our apologies. Um, you will be the, the host of the uh, World Conference of UNESCO on higher education in May. And we believe that uh, this is also a very, very strategic space, um, Barcelona. And we kindly invite you also to extend the words to, to the audience on the topic. Thank you very much, Professor Barrera. Thank you, first of all, to Real and the EULAC for having invited the Catalan government and the Research and Universities Department, department to be able to share a few words with you effectively. Um, coming soon, the next UNESCO WHEC conference taking place soon. With regards to the open science world, something that links and unites us in this collaborative uh, way of working between Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean, our governments, our institutions. Before the EU representative uh, mentioned a few words, I would like to add on, I'll be brief. One of them is that at least for the last 150 years, something that's been happening and that has basically become an axiom, a scientific axiom in the sense that uh, it means that uh, is the future development. And now this must be part of the 
open science as a political, moral and ethical commitment by and for the scientific community, for those of us taking part so that we can ensure that today's science tomorrow will mean social advance and uh, scientific development. Also, uh, I'd like to share with our colleagues from Obrial and uh, Silag, the colleagues who met with us recently here in Catalonia, when it comes to the situation that governments, sometimes we have a control capacity in the sense that PhD doctoral thesis, not only in Catalonia, in Europe, we have a research open portal with all those publications, over 70% of scientific publications are open data. But the most important, the most significant, significant and something that we can really uh, highlight and focus on are PhD theses, because these are the top level uh, elements, which are mainly and very, very important when it comes to open science. We have an e-repository, it's TDX, it's the doctoral thesis in network from 2000, to, from the year 2000, yes, with more than 36,000 doctoral theses that are available to everyone. These are 90% of the doctoral theses defensed in most of the Catalan universities. This e-repository, which is the Europe CISIS portal, which is managed by the UCL, and the Catalan uh, production is more than 30% are almost the same as Sweden and Italy in their portal. And what's the most important aspect? Our portal represents at the moment the free access to more than almost 200,000 of over nine, 29 European countries and one more piece of data. This doctoral thesis in Catalonia in the year 2020, they had over 54 million downloads and reading uh, clicks. So this is the inflection point so that we can build new bridges with countries that, okay, they might face political logistics or economic difficulties, but all governments participating and sharing this open science spirit we are all committed. Progress, well-being cannot be a reality without science. And today, science means open science. Uh, once more, thank you so much. We shall be waiting for you with open arms in a few weeks in Barcelona. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, John de Lizagares. Now I would like to invite all of us to uh, go a step further and enter more deeply into the topic uh, of today's virtual session. As you know, we have two sessions prepared. The one of today is dedicated to the topic of tools and policies to promote open access, open data, and open education. And this dialogue will be structured uh, along two phases. In, during the first phase, we will hear Ms. Paula Azrilevich, as well as Ms. Alia Lopez de San Roman, um, on the uh, respective policies and programs and instruments developed both in the EU and on the CELAC side in Argentina. And then we will uh, dive a little bit deeper with individual um, knowledge producers on the one hand and decision makers on the other hand, also from both countries. And thirdly, we will then have a perspective from India, as you know, the idea of uh, this entire, entire exercise is an interregional dialogue. So we are very, very proud also to, to, to have been able to count with uh, the confirmation of um, an Indian participant in this dialogue. And for the attendees of this uh, dialogue, um, please use the chat 
as well as the Q&A section um, to formulate questions, comments, observations, or any inf other information that you would like to share with the audience. And uh, we will try to also insert some of your comments, some of the questions that you might have, um, and direct them to, to one of the speakers that you would like to to, to, to have an, a response from them. So I invite you from now on to also interact um, with the speakers. You can formulate your questions in Spanish, in English, or perhaps another language, um, and we will try to attend them. So um, I will now uh, invite uh, Paula Atzlevich, who already has um, shifted on her video, and also um, Ms. Alia Lopez, um, to switch on her camera. Um, uh, and I would like to ask you the following question. Um, open science can be understood either as a set of policies oriented to guarantee open access to and use of data, or as a different way to produce, share, and use knowledge, to assess the impact of knowledge production, and to justify public funding for knowledge production. During the pandemic of COVID-19, these two approaches to open science have become relatively visible in statements of different international as well as national actors. Please outline for your respective region, CELAC and Europe, the main advances as well as challenges in the implementation of open science policies, as well as the rationale behind or the primary goals of those policies. And I invite Ms. Paula Atrilevich first to speak. Hello, Anna. Hello to all of you. Thank you so much for your invitation. Regarding Anna's questions, I would say that even though the pandemic actually showed us or came to prove and exacerbated the need of the importance of open science, what's happened is that it's accelerated part of its processes in our region specifically. Uh, we've been working for the recent years in this sense, and I'll give you exa an example. We could mention some specific actions, beginning, for example, with those that started in the end of the 90s and which were related to the need to improve the access and visibility of our academic papers and magazines. Then, back then, we held some initiatives working with scientific publishers to improve their publication quality, but also to help them migrate towards the, the web or the digital world. We could highlight the impact of some projects like Seralik or Tindax in our region, which uh, gave uh, the Cielo and Raidolix, which are huge digital databases of open access, of course, and also some open access portals. These are newspaper libraries or archives uh, from our university network. And it's also important to mention that differently to other Latin American regions, managing these scientific uh, newspapers is done by the, the academic world. I mean that our newspapers have not been managed by third parties or commercial uh, stakeholders, um, rarely charge authors to publish in their magazines. This uh, means a huge advantage when it comes to the problematic of open access in different regions, because we could state that the knowledge being generated and published in the magazines in our region is uh, spread freely and without restrictions of any kind. Above all, this region has a great level of virtual libraries like the Claxo, which is a great example, and also digital repositories, which started uh, happening at the end of the 90s, beginning of the 2000s, and with uh, the time have been consolidated, uh, also given international advances, technical advances. So today they are 
inter um, they can be operated they respect the scientific production of institutions and currently they include not only publication repositories but also educational open resources and also primary research data Another main difference worth highlighting is that in our region, our national states, the main donors of science, technology, and innovation, and they dominate a big part of the value chain, paying salaries, infrastructure, resources, um, managing the evaluation and in indicators, uh, fostering open science uh, initiatives, of course, and also, we should say as a footnote that in many of our countries, including Argentina, um, there are programs, regional programs, uh, centering or, or managing subscription to the large publication houses. As a consequence, the states uh, can require how the scientific results are disclosed and also uh, the insight in the scientific practice in order to change it into truly open science. As the recommendation of the UNESCO says, as more open scientific practices, more inclusive and transparent also together with more accessible scientific knowledge subject to critic is a more efficient enterprise that improves quality and impact of science. And therefore, uh, uh, it's, they are better for decision making, policy making, and also the consolidation of science. It is true, and it's that way as a consequence of the role of the state in our region in terms of uh, funding to science. In 2010, nine countries of the region joined for a joint project that resulted in this reference, which is the National Network of Open uh, access repositories for science and this network began with a cooperation signed in buenos aires by the main authorities of science in the different countries integrating the project and they reflect the political will towards the open access to scientific production in latin america as a public good uh, they have uh, public funding and to, today this network is composed by Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, uh, El Salvador, Ecuador, Spain, Mexico, Paraguay and Uruguay and throughout the services of this network we get, get support, give support to the different structures of Latin America throughout a platform of in a standard platform of interoperability sharing uh, the visibility of scientific results of the different regions and today it's the reference as a result of our work referencia uh, gives access to more than three million documents generated within the region this experience is based mainly in technical agreements, also political and organizational agreements within the different organisms of science and technology, ministries, and different bodies of the member states together with the network. The creation of this network has been uh, the political achievement, the most important political achievement, achievement in terms of open science and open uh, data of the region with an agreement of all 11 countries working for open science. So from the referencia, we integrate in international networks, working together with COA, which is the international coalition of repositories of open access and we've also participated with open air in this way we build bridges of collaboration between both regions on the other hand we should also highlight that in latin america the obligation of disclosing open access throughout digital repositories the outcomes of scientific outcomes including primary data of publications that rely in Argentina, Peru, and Mexico. Argentina has also a commission of open access, as Karina has mentioned before, that works within the MinSID and is working now in a recommendation for open ask, uh, science for the ministry. And since many, a couple of years ago, it has created a national system of repositories of open access 
reflection of that law created by the ministry and it also has a system that facilitates sharing the scientific knowledge between the different actors of the system it has to do with the openness of the uh, equipment and brazil also has a manifest in terms of open access to uh, research data which is the ev and, and it also adds to a very important man mandate of the APES, which requires open access to the uh, research outcomes financed by them also chile is leading the actions of open science in the country also uruguay costa rica also is taking big steps towards opening uh, scientific data and it was the country opening the collaboration with referencia and research data aliens and this is being a very interesting movement in the region of uh, Central America and the Caribbean, Latin America and the Caribbean. And in all countries, there are different initiatives for open access, open science, uh, citizen science, and different systems of open assessments. And in this sense, the role of the states as funders is key. Nevertheless, with all this experience, we still face different challenges. For example, there is an urgent need of capacity building in the different bodies of uh, science, technology, and the different universities. We need to create human resources in order to foster such initiatives. We also need new profiles that are still unexisting for these questions. We also need to generate or raise awareness on the importance of open access and open science, and also increase knowledge on the different national laws according to institutional data we also need to improve our infrastructures both at national regional and international level for different repositories for data management for data management plans also collaborative work platforms etc etc we need to work with the different thematic repositories and data that are alien to our countries where many times researchers um, have their production so that these repositories are interoperative and we can recover or regain the contents in an automized way for our institutional or national repositories or national infrastructures. And we also need to make changes in the traditional models of assessment so that they are open to new ways of doing science. We also need to respect and defend and protect our differences. And also to conclude, I would like to say that as objectives, the main objectives of all this are to have the freedom of choosing the research topics in terms of our needs uh, with regardless external conditionings as uh, languages, so main languages of science and other uh, factors. We also need to assure the open access to information with public funds. We also need to increase visibility of national scientific production. And also, as, it is, as it's indicated in the UNESCO recommendation, to increase the interchange of scientific knowledge to make scientific knowledge to be multilingual, that they are openly accessed to everyone and also reusable by everyone, and to open the process of creation, assessment, and communication of uh, scientific knowledge for other social agents beyond the scientific community. And finally, I would like to highlight that in Latin America, scientific knowledge is a public good that should not be privatized and should be at the service of society. We want to be independent, sovereign, but also open, collaborative, and inter interoperative. Thank you very much, Roland. Um, I very much like the way how you presented um, the different initiatives and programs uh, and projects that are on the way in the SELAC region. I also very much like the way how you uh, tried to to sketch out what the difference 
SSR between um, the path uh, on open science that was followed in Latin America and the Caribbean in difference uh, or in differentiation also to other regions. And I also find, found it very interesting that you sketched out the, those collaboration programs that already exist with other regions and also the, the challenges that you are facing. And there are, of course, many as you, as you could sketch out. I would now like to give the floor to Ms. Alea Lopez de San Roman, who will just attend the very same uh, question from the European side. Alea, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Eh, buenas tardes, buenos días a todos. Good evening, good morning to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here speaking about open science, and even more in this interregional framework between these regions such as Latin America, Caribbean and the European Union, which have so much to say in the process of open science, focusing in the different advances, uh, challenges and justification, beginning with the advances, developments of the region regarding open science. First of all, I would like to say that we have been more and more aware of how open science can contribute to deal with the different problems, deficiencies that the scientific system has presently. There are many the problems that we find and so, sometimes I like to refer to a presentation by Dr. Annie Kinsley. She is presently a librarian in the University of Flinders in Australia. And that's a presentation that she did during the week of open access in July, where she quoted or mentioned different problems such as the hyper authority, too many authors behind a scientific article, the pressure to publish, the pressure to get funds that the researchers have, also how these academic stars get compensation, but not in a collaborative way, also how there are sometimes there is a low quality science methods are not analyzed or not reprodu reproducible also the existence of a very condensed market with a vertical integration of services that sometimes lie on commercial hands or a low um, business power of those scientific bodies to these problems we can add many others like for example the pressure of, for publishing sometimes focuses in a few scientific journals and also there is a wrong perception of what scientific quality is also linked to that system of uh, compensation and incentives and assessment of research also how we understand open science in the european commission we understand it as sharing knowledge and tools that allow that generation of knowledge and also very important as soon as possible in the process of research and not only that researchers for researchers but also together with society and the citizens and why is it important that open science from our perspective, because it fosters quality and research efficiency, assuring that results and outcomes can be shared, can be verified with the openness, collaboration, reproductibility of that research. We increase also the scientific quality and also the citizen confidence in science. As one of the main advances in the region is this progressive awareness of how open science can contribute to uh, change or face the different challenges and problems of the present community. Also another advance is the adoption of different policies, be it of a more global open science or certain areas like the open access to publication of the management of scientific data by the member states of the European Union and also by different entities, funding ent entities, research entities, or that manage public funds for research. In 2018, the European Commission participated in the publication of a, issuing of a recommendation for member states on access and preservation of scientific information uh, with the recommendation of for the member states to adopt 
those policies. The European Commission has different roles in which it is pressuring towards open science, for example, throughout legislative initiatives, throughout recommendations for member states, but also throughout our policy, throughout the pro framework program for funding or financing to research and innovation in the horizon Europe between 2021, 2027 with approximately 25 million euros, we have a, an open science policy, which is very ambitious. And one of the main pillars is the open access to scientific publications immediately with open licenses and also with intellectual property for the authors to give open access. We also require to those entities or researchers that we finance the responsible management of their data so that they can be found, easily found, they're accessible, and we also had made an extension of the open science, which is not only an obligation for the results, but also we consider it when it comes to assessing the financing that we do from the very moment that we receive the proposals. These are the advancements, the policies that we've been developed within our own endowment framework program. And of course, all the collaboration, these debates, sessions with our partners internationally within the scientific um, world. And as for our challenges, the ones we're facing are supporting the open practice, open data, open access to journals, the responsible reproductibility, <laughs> the reproduction in a respectful manner of publications, journals, etc., and the facilitators allowing or permitting open science to develop its full potential. Uh, la refor uh, the, the reform of the scientific arena and the scientific world is basic to change and improve the incentive program that is given in the academic uh, arena, the infrastructure of open access, um, for example, the European uh, network or cloud of research and also the legislative framework when it comes to law legislation and uh, copyright protection uh, allowing this full development. We are aware that open science in order to be effective and develop its full potential requires the coordinated action of uh, funders and uh, stakeholders uh, involved in the whole process and all the different partners, not only at local, regional, European, but global level. We need to all coordinate our efforts. We need to unify the way we tackle open science. And the last uh, idea, the justification of the objectives we are um, aspiring to is going back to the original meaning of science. I mean, science understood as a contribution towards the scientific advancement, understood as the progress towards scientific development and also as the progress of society as a whole, even more so as in the European Commission case, when we talk about science coming from public science funds. Thank you so much. I think this was a very, very good uh, insight uh, on the European policies and programs uh, related to open science. And I think this is a good uh, starting base uh, for our dialogue now with the other experts invited to this dialogue. And I hand out the microphone to my colleague in the moderation, Dr. Nicolas Patrici from Obrea Global. Thank you very much, um, Anna. We are a bit late, but I don't want to start this session without thanking very much Dr. Ganesh from India, because it is actually later than in Europe, in India, and uh, he will be waiting until we finish this session to give his perspective. So Dr. Ganesh, thank you so much for uh, being here this late. Uh, we'll have now a first round of uh, discussion. We have gathered 
experts and representatives from different type of organizations. We have representatives from academia, we have representatives from networks. Uh, in some, we have representatives that are implementing the, the policies that were introduced by both the European Commission and the Argentine um, Ministry of Science and the Catalan government as well. Uh, I will introduce all the speakers very quickly and then the dynamic will be the following. There are three questions I will ask uh, the speaker, we, I'll ask the speakers to be very brief in their answers, two or three minutes per question. The questions are, uh, uh, we will divide it in three blocks. The first block will be on the level of implementation of public policy in, in, in open science and the role your organization is playing in the implementation of those policies. The second one will be on impact. How do you measure or how do you consider the policies are impacting in your organizations and how the activities of your own organizations are impacting in the design of policies regarding open access, open science, and open education. And the third one will be rather more general on interregional cooperation initiatives and how and what has to be, has, what and how has to be done. Por lo tanto, voy a, a, a introducir primero. I shall then introduce. Professor Dominique Babini from Claxo, which is the Latin American uh, Social Sciences um, uh, Council of Social, the Claxo. Uh, Dr. Paul Ardes, I hope I'm pronouncing correctly his family name. He's the co-chair of the League of European Research Universities, LIRU. And also, Together with him is Professor Ignacy Labastida, the chair of the League of European Research Universities, uh, the Information and Open Access Policy Group. Welcome to both of you. Also, we have the Caribbean representative. Today is Professor Donovan Campbell. He's the head of the Department of Geography and Geology at the University of the West Indies. It's the Mona campus in Jamaica. And finally, uh, Professor Lautaro Matas, the Executive Secretary and Technical Manager of the Open Access to Science Repositories Network, La Referencia. Well, in the same order as I have introduced them, Dominique, Paul, Ignacy, Donovan, Lautaro, and sorry, I forgot mentioning my great colleague and friend, Professor Oscar Dominguez, uh, because you're my friend, I'm sure you'll uh, excuse me. Apart from being my friend, he's also the president of the Latin American and Caribbean Higher Education Area and the executive director of the Colombian Association of Universities, both ASCUN and ENLACES. So, Dominic, then Paul, Ignazi, Donovan, Donovan, Oscar, and Lautaro, please, I would love you to reflect briefly on the evaluation of the implementation of the tools promoted by public policies towards open data, uh, open education, and open science in your regions and universities. So first, Dominic, you have the floor, you have three minutes. Thank you so much, Ignazi. Thank you so much to uh, Obreal and uh, Silak and the rest of institutions who have welcomed us today and allowing this uh, session to the end tomorrow. In our region where communi academic communications, as it was said, are financed by public finances, the greatest level of commitment is held at universities and science institutions from the governments. From Claxo, uh, made of 80 research centers of 50 different countries in Latin America, in the latest 20 years, we have evaluated very positively, on the one hand, the initiatives and policies oriented towards fostering open access to journals, academic and scientific journals, also, in, we are the region of uh, 
the world with more open access repositories using free word tools like EJS or quality region, uh, sorry. Also, we have developed uh, the Latindex magazine, the UNAM initiative, Redalico Melica, a development by the OAM, Cielo, which is the information network of uh, health uh, departments, and at government government level, the advances advancements of policy. Poli uh, policies uh, are fostering the repositories towards the implementation of open access. We highlight the value of bibliodiversity in the repositories. We consider that's very important. And here, it's very important to count on universities. Of course, the national repositories coordinated, as Paula said, with uh, regional, a regional level with the reference, with La Referencia, with Lautaro as the representative today, in the context of the International Repository uh, Cooperation, the COAR. We have several challenges. The cultural change in order to advance firmly in other open uh, access scientific activities requiring interregional and regional interaction, like when it comes to research open data, normalizing uh, open access with educational resources, keeping working the reprints and the books, uh, academic papers we see like a Cielo or pre Cielo books, so that these products are more valued uh, in the evaluation processes. All these contents in papers and open repositories in our region are basically made invisible in the evaluation processes, where almost exclusively is only valued what's published in English or in the mainstream. So the greatest challenge for our, our situation is to include these evaluation, our, our content. And we said that before, tomorrow Laura Borrelli from Claxo will talk about this topic a little bit more. Thank you, thank you very much. You answered the first part of the second and third that were formulated. So. Please be a little bit more brief so that we can enjoy uh, later on the Q&A. Now I shall give the floor from Dominic's reflection. Uh, this somehow uh, provocation when it comes to the relationship with evaluation and open science versus public policy. To two colleagues from the Research League of Universities in Europe, which is a group of universities, European universities, with a high level of research excellence. I'm not sure whether Paul and Ignazi would like to comment separately or you want to mention uh, separately, but you take your pick. You're all Spanish speakers, so we might have an answer. So up to you, the way you answer. I wonder if uh, I might start in English. No sé si debo eh, well, my Spanish is, is not, it's not uh, no me, es maravilloso. Let me start in English and hand over sí, voy a responder en inglés. We have, we have an interpretation, Paul. So you can Tenemos... speak English without uh, any, any problem. Just turn right. on your interpretation icon in the tool, in the tool, in the toolbar, uh, the, down there you will see a sort of glow. Click yeah. on it, select English, and then interpreters will will translate. That's fantastic. Thank, thanks very much. Uh, certainly, in uh, northern and uh, uh, western Europe, uh, there has been uh, an enormous amount of activity because of um, funder mandates from our research funders, who have specified that. Uh, open access publication, ideally with no embargo, is a condition of being funded. And in national um, evaluation schemes like the Research Excellence Framework here in the 
UK, the, tra the trajectory, uh, the direction of travel is to uh, require open access for um, all the submitted um, outputs. This means that with the big deals that we're striking with publishers, uh, using Plan S as a, a guideline for us, 80% of UK research will be available uh, in open access as a result of all the activity uh, that universities have uh, taken. So that, that, that's just the UK, and I'm sure Ignacy can tell us more about other parts of Europe. With, with our recent deal with, with Elsevier, we have unlimited open access publishing uh, opportunities. And that's been a tremendous hit with our academics. Our academics like open access. They want to publish in open access. But one of the things they feel is that public policies from the union, uh, from um, uh, funders, are actually directing their research and telling them what to do. Uh, so there is some resistance to the way that open access has been implemented in Europe, because it's seen as being over bureaucratic. That's not to say that researchers uh, dislike open access. They do like it, but they want to be more in control. And they feel that with all the policy statements that are coming out, some of which don't agree with each other, it's actually quite a confusing landscape in which to move from a subscription model of publishing to an open access model. But let me hand over to my colleague Ignasi, who could tell us more about other parts of uh, Europe. Thank you, Paul. Muchas gracias a, a los organizadores. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you to the organizers of this dialogue. I answering to uh, Professor Nicolas' question, I would say that the level of implementation and in our region, and maybe I would add a little bit more on the southern region of Europe, as for publications in open data and specifically journals, I guess we are quite healthy in the sense that our universities enjoy 90% repositories full of contents with their publications. We still have challenges such as books. This is an area that we still need to face. If we go to the next point, data, we see that we're still lacking a long, so there's a long way to go. It's not that we want all data to be open, it's impossible to have all data open, but we need a good management of data so that they can be reusable even when they need to be closed, but we can access them in a more restrictive way. For that, it's necessary that from universities, from the policies of public administrations, they accompany researchers to make this change up to now researchers were reluctant to share those research products, so it's necessary to accompany them. In, regarding open education, I would say that in our case, it was one of the main subjects of knowledge that we shared with society, but the appearance of the so-called MOOC was very, uh, Bad for the open access resources. There we used the word open in a confused way, confusing way, and now we are more and more recovering these activities in certain countries, and they're applying some policies to share those educational resources in the line also of including the more, uh, the wider concept of open science. Also, with the, talking about the commitments of administrations and universities, I need to be critical. Uh, it's necessary that universities, administrations, when they use policies, they believe in them. It's not only about doing a policy because it's good, it looks good, because UNESCO has made a declaration, but we need to believe in it. So that's why I ask that when a policy is applied, it has a follow-up procedure. Other countries do not, some countries do not do this follow-up procedure. They just have a 
data management plan, but is there anyone assessing, um, verifying, monitoring that process, giving recommendations, making the management to be better? So we do not want to have more bureaucracy, we researchers. I mean, we need to improve the way in which we do research. That's why it's necessary that when we sign declarations like DOLA, it's not only because it looks good, but also because the services, the follow-up monitoring is uh, fruitful and that we have very clear objectives and I think which is creating a more open science. So thank you. Thank you very much, Ignacy. Thank you very much, Paul. You are already making some reflections that are uh, generating some comments, uh, debate, and I would like to highlight this distinction between two blocks. The first one, which is the access to resources, availability of resources, we can have more or less resources available in the open access. And on the other side, we have the block of your last reflection and the reflection of Dominique, which is are more linked to the will of designing scientific policies or the way in which they do open science, so to say relating or related with the will of institutions. You were speaking about accompanying this process, but uh, also the funding entities guide towards one way and it should be a different way maybe or widening the way and Dominique was also speaking about the need of taking into account the open uh, process of science and uh, resource in terms of assessment and evaluation in the scientific careers also the participants I'm sure they have the same will to uh, debate discuss please use the tools we have the chat box or the question and answer tool. Uh, Anna is following uh, this process in a very Germanic way. So she's taking down notes to be able to follow the afterwards the debate and discussion. But now I would like to give the floor to Donovan Campbell. Maybe you can tell us something about this from the perspective of a university that has the will of occupying a regional space in the Caribbean. Donovan, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm excited to participate in this important meeting and to provide you know, a brief contribution from the University of the, of the West Indies, um, you know, sharing our perspective when it comes to uh, open data. Now, the University of the West Indies um, is based you know, in the Caribbean and we have you know, campuses five campuses. Uh, we have physical campuses in Antigua and Barbuda, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, and, and Jamaica. And we serve the Caribbean region and, as a whole. And so, you know, open data to us and open science is, uh, you know, of absolute importance. And just based on level of implementation, I would say we, we are at the infancy stage. We still have you know, a far way to go when we look across the region and where things are, are at at the moment. Um, we, we see in some countries where they are beginning to develop open data policies, like, you know, in Jamaica, for example, and they've already established open data, open data platforms there. But within our university itself, there are a number of initiatives and tools being, being implemented to position uh, the, the institution for what is coming in terms of open data. Um, you know, we, we have established, for example, scientific hubs um, to harmonize the work that we're doing in various areas and share with our, our partners and collaborators from across the region and, and, and beyond. Um, two examples of these scientific hubs are, you know, one of them is the Global Institute for Climate Smart and Resilient Development, which, which is specifically focused on climate change and sustainable um, development issues. And then we have established also the Center of Excellence for Oceanography and the Blue Economy. Now, these entities are set up as coordinating hubs to foster linkages with various partners uh, with the aim of eliminating silos, uh, encouraging collaboration, uh, knowledge production, and you know, 
exploiting synergies uh, and opportunities. We also know that our small islands are big ocean states. So when we think about the Center for Oceanography and the Blue Economy, for example, we know that that will require big data in order to, 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 to solve some of the pressing challenges that we are, we are facing um, as, a, as, a, as a region. And so that is, those, those are two of the scientific hubs that we have established to, to better serve um, society and to you know, provide a lever for open data, open science um, you know, access within our university. However, uh, many researchers struggle um, with access to um, you know, important peer review uh, publications. And so that remains a pressing uh, challenge for our academics across the region. And we are, our libraries or different um, you know, knowledge based systems are engaged in these journals to, to see what can be done um, in that direction. Uh, a second initiative that is being um, you know, implemented in our university is the development of a knowledge portal or knowledge platform. And this knowledge platform uh, you know, will, is designed to enable access to timely and relevant um, data on projects and programs related to the sustainable development goals and climate change. And it will, it will also include digital repositories while promoting open data um, public, public policies. So in spite of the challenges we face with, 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 with access, um, you know, we are not sitting and waiting on things to happen. Um, you know, the university is actively repositioning itself um, to you know, take advantage uh, of you know, open data uh, opportunities, open science possibilities. And we're also advocating across the region, working with our governments across the region to you know, harness um, the, the different you know, levels of skills and expertise and innovations um, to help uplift the communities we serve. So the region is still, you know, in some ways we have a far way to go, um, but, you know, the, the will is there, um, the financial, uh, you know, support is definitely needed in order to get us where we want to go as not just a university, but also as a region when it comes to open data and open science. So over back to you, Jerry. Thank you so much, uh, Donovan. You are adding one layer to the to one layer to the, the discussion, which is institutional perspectives and how universities are dealing. Ignacy was mentioning this very briefly as well. So very, very interesting. Uh, so far, I guess we are reaching a point where we have discussing, we have been discussing resources on one hand, availability of resources. We have been discussing challenges at different levels. At the first of all, maybe if you allow me, uh, the epistemological level. So uh, at the level of the real meaning of doing or making science and generating impact and how this impact impact should be open. Uh, but this implies political, professional and institutional challenges as far as I have been listening your interventions. Now on the institutional line, we have uh, the, we are lucky because today uh, with us, we have uh, our colleague representing universities, not only from all Colombia, but also uh, universities from Latin America in general and the Caribbean as they form the Latin American and Caribbean higher education space or a space of higher education. I never know how to translate this. Uh, into, into uh, airport English, which is the English that I speak. And tomorrow we'll also have the vision of one Ministry of Education to see how universities and educational institutions are uh, making use of the tools that both researchers and research organisms or research ministries are implementing. So, Oscar, I am afraid that your mission here is to give us the, pers the, the perspective of the universities uh, in terms of the institutional ch challenges that 
Dr. Donovan was mentioning and Ignacy was also uh, drawing in his intervention. Oscar, the floor is yours. Muchas gracias, Nico. Buenas thank you, tarde. thank you very much. Good evening, good morning. First thing, I would like to begin by acknowledging Iulac and Obrial, and in particular, Diane Bonilla, Ana Barrera, and you, Obrial, Nicolás, Ramón Torren, for this initiative. I think this goes in line with what we are trying to consolidate as movement, help to this international movement of open science. Being accompanied by these distinguished colleagues in the panel, that they are experts, true experts, and managers of the process, I would need to answer your question of how to assess the implementation of open science tools. And I would need to say uh, three main ideas. The first one is that we all know that this moment in Latin America, and, sp and specifically in Colombia, as you know, we from the Colombian Association of Universities, we acknowledge that this topic, as has been said by many uh, panelists, is nothing new. This movement, luckily, is here, is around since more than 20 years ago. And the possibility of and the mention to the platform La Referencia is an expression of what we have been working in this line. And I would like to say that in this moment, and also summing up, there are two big tensions in the region. First of all, in Latin America, and particularly in Colombia, it is in the consolidation of public policy on open science. And I believe that we association play a fundamental role. We have provided information and assured spaces so that this debate, this discussion is at the level that the country requires, but also that the whole region participates in the discussion. So a contribution to this is this materialization in all Latin American countries and particularly in the UNESCO of open science. There is an important way as ministry, as the ministry has developed the Ministry of Science and Technology uh, we are discussing at this very moment the formulation of that policy. And there is a part linked to the previous intervention from Nicolas, is that we would need that once this first phase is consolidated, or the, because we need to have a governmental initiative, we need a second phase of strategy of resources to make it real. It is evident that there are countries that already have these policies and they have been able to materialize a regulation for the open science, but we do not have the resources. And therefore we have the limitations of Latin America uh, with a GDP, a very limited GDP. And if you look at the recommendations of the UNESCO, they said that uh, 1% of the GDP should be devoted to open science. And that's not even uh, the budget devoted to all science in our, in our Latin America countries. So if I could approach this first question, I would say that there are two things that Latin America uh, is leading. First of all, the materialization of a policy related to open science, but that that science is accompanied by a management of resources, a proposal for resources that allows to materialize the proposal, because otherwise, uh, I'm in the same line of Ignacy, I'm reacting to what is being said. It's not worth having good policies if we do not have to this resource. For example, today in Colombia, part of the initiative of open science is managed by the higher education institutions and the financial uh, commitments in order to develop it. And also I'd like to mention, Nicolás, because I wouldn't like to mention the fact that the tensions that currently we are suffering in the region, as both Paola and Alea mentioned in the previous intervention in, at the beginning of today's debate, there are two tensions that somehow could be happening and that we can interpret from the words. There are some groups that are somehow generating the, the break for once and for all the negotiations with commercial publishing houses in order, as I say, to break 
for once this dependency link and this uh, risks the top knowledge uh, and and uh, also, the other, on the other hand, the other group is saying that this position should be a sort of transition, as we understand in Colombia. There should be this transition, as I say, to change from these uh, situations towards this dependency towards uh, an open science, uh, as our previous. To add, I would mention again. It's the politics and how these tension groups today are managing this issue. We are not an institution of uh, higher education, but we are an entity um, gathering higher, higher education institutions. And now in the European and Caribbean regions, for all of you, and especially you, Nicolas, we're trying that Latin America can link again, can have this resounding voice where we can be heard and open science can become a Latin American commitment. And in this agenda that we are drafting, this real access is one of the three topics that we are really going to achieve. We want to advance in open science and we want to serve as a platform to advance in this sense. We're also participating in the construction of this public policy. We have also develop the open chair regarding this topic so that we can all understand in Colombia what's all about when we open when we talk about open science because it seems that it's clear for all of you but uh, a colleague these days were, was saying that there are over 30 definitions when we talk about open science so this is what we've tried to build this sort of dialogue to fully understand what open science means. And of course, in Colombia, we are uh, leading this managing of top level databases and we've incorporated open science as the, the, the basic level of this uh, activity. I'll leave it here because of time. Thank you, thank you, Oscar, very much. Thank you for adding this element. Clearly, it's the financing uh, because it's not only an epistemologic challenge, it's rather a material issue, material resources to be able to complete different perspectives on the way we understand science, open science, what we are debating about. Uh, for whom are we generating uh, knowledge and uh, for what? You also mentioned about the networks and movements going on in Latin America that have been able to challenge the sort of worry and promotion of open science for a long time. Dr. Latauro Matas, he's our referen uh, representative of La Referencia. If I understand, La Referencia is a network of agencies and institutions promoting open science and which have promoted fostered dialogues using common free tools, not only towards the north, south or south, uh, but also from the south towards the south, which is quite interesting. So please let me use your intervention to tackle the third question, what else can we do or how can we generate mechanisms and alternative tools in order to promote both and different epistemological concept towards science, but also fostering the financing of these tools, face institutional challenges that, that Oscar said, change depending on the financing possibilities of different countries, but uh, what uh, Ignazi and Oscar said, we are not far uh, from this idea. So again, it's an epistemological concept. Maybe some interregional or regional entities could play a relevant role. Lautaro, what's your perspective? What's your experience in this regards? Thank you very much, Obreal. Thank you so much, Nicolas, for having invited me. For me, it's a great honor to be a panelist with the, such great colleagues. Well, in order to answer to your question, the good and bad things is that almost everyone said it all, but in order to 
talk about La Referencia, our project. Today, it's a consolidated initiative which was founded thanks to an agreement amongst ministries, science and technic uh, departments, gathering actually the state willing 10 years back uh, consolidating so that we could be financed by states. So we gathered to say, hey, we want to work with open access around repositories, but nowadays it's become uh, for uh, different fora where different uh, science and technology organizations in our countries. Uh, we are more and more countries as times goes by and we are debating and pushing up to the highest ministerial levels all these problems and issues we're talking today uh, about. So we want to think that far beyond the great recognition towards this historic, uh, like Cielo, Redalic, Claxo, and now Forex. Uh, we also want to highlight La Referencia because we are uh, activating and we are actually asking governments to go top down with their policies. And the question on the political actors or stakeholders, I think it's a great tool in order to uh, ask them, uh, politicians, to actually uh, make them put in the center of their agendas all our topics, you know. We want to encourage them so that as for the degree of commitment with institutions, it's very diverse, like a region. There are universities, uh, institutes that are really committed with open science. And again, in some of the cases, it's all about libraries that are committed with that, but sometimes the deans or the academics are not really that aware of what they could do to really generate or create and foster the, the bottom-up change towards open science. So in La Referencia, we are firm believers, uh, looking back as pioneers, when it comes to open science, we cannot sleep on our laurels. For us, one of the challenges is creating, or how can we foster, this is what we're trying to suggest and to encourage uh, everyone to work together in this regional ecosystem that can interoperate with other ecosystems with a more global one. There are challenges that we are facing when it comes to data as a region. We lack something as the European Commission actually financing a massive project like Open Air, Open Science Cloud in Europe, etc. So this we must build with dialogue frame. Uh, financing together, sign an agreement with uh, states and governments so that we can finance infrastructures, the, you know, teaching and, and cultural changes, fostering also cu cultural changes within our academics so that not only they want to share uh, research data, but they know how to use them, you know, and following Dominic, it's very important for us. We're really focused on our internal working group because councillors with different states, we are defining this benchmark, knowing how do we evaluate uh, what sort of evaluation systems do we have in our countries and how are we going to be working uh, together with uh, the institutions of uh, La Referencia in order to suggest changes when it comes to evaluation systems towards diversity and the generating of common indicators and also another important it is the policy monitoring of open science. Okay, thank you very much, Lautaro, for your reflection. I shall now try, we have only 18 minutes left in this second round. I'll try that the second and third question be the same. Um, following your reflection, this calling to sharing resources or helping initiatives that are common amongst different institutions and regions, it's true that resources are scarce. 
I'd like now thus to ask both Paul and Ignazi, because they also represent European universities, of course, and surely they'll also complain about the resources available, but I'm sure that they have plenty of European Commission and own resources to foster open science. How do you evaluate the impact both in the professional career of researchers and when it comes to implementing policies, when it comes to open science, and what sort of tools do you understand can be shared or what sort of bridges can we build with other regions to foster getting closer to common challenges and that sometimes the experiences might not be shared? So in this sense, Ignazi, a few words, uh, one or two minutes, and then Paul, a uh, reflection on this, please. Uh, yes, uh, quickly, I believe that the importance of the policies that comes from abroad has made open science to leave libraries, rather go up to universities. And this has helped policies at universities to be understood as always everything must be open. I always say that in a few years, we could uh, celebrate something about closed science because everything should be and shall be open. We are collaborating an awful lot with uh, La Referencia. La Recolecta in Spain uh, works with La Referencia. As for repositories, we are working a lot when it comes to standards, software uh, st uh, strategies. It's very important that amongst all of us, we build an infrastructure because if we don't build common and public uh, and infrastructures which are led by people, we shall lose this bet towards open science. Together with uh, Dr. Dominguez, I was saying that together with Colombians, we have shared some ideas on transformative agreements and these new models of publication. It's fundamental that we shall talking from Europe towards Latin America, but also in Europe, we need to learn from our Latin American colleagues to make it real in open science. Do you want to say something, Paul? Yes, um, I, I will just add something to what Ignacy has, uh, has said. Of course, he's um, absolutely, absolutely right. Um, there is a challenge uh, uh, across Europe in getting um, regions and countries lined up behind single uh, policy positions, which is why in Europe it's important to see open science as a move in the development of a research culture uh, on, on the ground. When the, Leru, the 23 Leru rectors issued their roadmap for open science, our chair uh, from uh, the Sorbonne in Paris, it was absolutely clear that this open science represented a fundamental change in the research culture. Now, if everybody's lined up behind that statement, you then have something that will work across national uh, borders, whether you're a member of the European Union or whether, like me and my country, for some reason we're not, because you, you, you've got uh, uh, an agenda which you, you, can all, um, you can all agree on. And then you start making real differences by looking at things like evaluation schemes, where you are um, evaluating the individual researcher, the individual research group, you are making recommendations about promotion. You are making recommendations about. Um, you're making recommendations uh, a, a, about pay increases. Now, Europe has produced several schema for what open science metrics, next generation metrics, new metrics look like, but no university has yet managed to implement them. Bernard Rontier wrote a very important report for the European Commission on next generation metrics and evaluation. And there isn't a single university in Europe that has been brave enough to adopt it. Now that to me is a sign of success or failure because if we don't crack the evaluation question uh, and reward people for adopting open science practices and changing their research culture to embrace open science as the new normal, then open science has not succeeded. We've yet, we've yet some way to go. 
And I think that's the position we're in at the moment. It isn't proven that research culture has changed because we refuse or decline to adopt some of the process that processes that need to be in place, like evaluation, if open science is the new normal. Muchas gracias, Paul. Thank you very much, Paul, for this reflection that invites to the debate and to reflect. And in this sense, Dominique uh, Babini maybe wants to say something because in her first words, she was mentioning something very close to what you have been said right now on the change on in culture when doing science. There is also a question in the chat box from Ramon Torren, and I think that it's very relevant and true. That's what I was referring to when I was speaking about the epistemological question on open science. There is the, the difference between repository data, etc. But also, uh, we need to reflect on the epistemological side of science. Maybe the reflection of Paul also advances the question of Ramon. Uh, maybe if we're quick enough, we will be able to speak about this question. But Dominic, you have three, four minutes to try to summarize all this and to offer a reflection that sheds some light on our way. Thank you. It's very enriching to hear all the opinions. I agree with Cristina Russo in that on the importance of values and principles. Values and principles are need to guide the orientation of funding. I agree that funding is important, but where are we going to assign the money? We have limited resources in the region, very limited, mainly due to the pandemic situation that has changed the reality of budgets in universities and research centers. And therefore, we need to decide what are we going to prioritize. If we analyze the 17 development, sustainable development goals that we have in all agendas of all governments, there is not one single of these objectives or goals that does not have to do with local knowledge local knowledge generated in a context. If we speak about access to water, for example, to assure the food chain for food security. So whatever topic we take needs so much local knowledge as international knowledge. And therefore we cannot invisibilize the local knowledge because therefore we would be prioritizing assessment based on what is communicated in English or in the mainstream. Of course, what is published in English is necessary, but also it is necessary to know the local knowledge, to disclose it and generate it in different platforms of open science and open access at local level. From Claxo, we are participating both in the recommendations of UNESCO Open Science, also in the International Council of Sciences, in the group on the future of publications and the future of assessment, and also in the new recommendations of the Budapest Open Access Initiative, 20 years after the first one where the term open access was created. In all these recommendations, we assess open infrastructures managed by the community without a third party commercialization. We also prioritize the reform of the assessment processes, as it has been mentioned here. And we speak about selecting systems that assure equality, participate, participation, that allow us to advance towards democratization of in science and in open science. We need all voices. And at this very moment, we're not hearing all voices. We're just guiding our science only uh, by one sector. So open science is an invitation 
to be more equal. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dominique. I have eight minutes left and three panelists. So Lautaro, do you want to reflect on these that Dominique has said? Uh, I think it's relevant for a network like yours because you're fostering the use of tools and democratization of knowledge in a way that I think uh, shows the, the different wills, as Dominique has said. Do you have any reflection? What can we do? Well, regarding the tools, from the very beginning, as part of our mission, we have developed tools that we have uh, made a public good for different countries. Uh, it is a technical network where we have created software that is developed in all countries, deployed in all countries, and that tries to solve. In the beginning, it was all about to solve or to tackle how to include information in the whole region. Also, working with Opener in Europe, it was about how to share or interoperate with Europe so that all production that would be in open access in our repositories would also be integrated in the collection of open air to comply with the guidelines and all the software that we have developed, be it funded by the initial funds or by the different contributions by the countries when they have a resource. And for example, they say we can contribute with this tool or this infrastructure. So it is the way that we have to create public goods to share them and also to reach that equality where for example a country with more resources can contribute more and have a bigger team and then afterward to have the same so software in brazil or in el salvador for example that's what we propose in la referencia as solution we work all together we build software infrastructures regardless the size of the country we adapt it and always think it in terms of what it can that in terms that how it can be part of the different countries. Now we have a cooperation agreement and we are transferring the software to the African education networks. And there we have also an extension of the mission as Ignacia said before, Spain entered in La Referencia. Therefore we have a direct contact um, a member that is part of our cultural and scientific cooperation and there we work together in order to integrate better to better integrate the systems and all that we believe that is the way to with small pieces of funding that we have in our countries to generate something and not be creating islands or each one doing their own infrastructure and we believe that that is the way for data also and to have persistent identificators, sustainable identificators that will be tools to afterwards implement the policies that we want to implement. Finally, one last thing that I wanted to mention is that for us, an impact that La Referencia had was to work as a collective memory against the political changes that happen naturally in all countries. So when a management changes, sometimes policies is rebooted so to say and in that way uh, la referencia has allowed us to regain in a way or to retake it where we had left it so thank you thank you i need to interrupt you because i'm, I'm lacking of time and the main problem is that we have interpreters that they have a very strict uh, schedule so it's difficult to stick to time so sorry about that but as you said in this logic of sharing tools i would like to ask dr donovan to make some reflection on this topic of sharing as a relevant element for the open science mr donovan you have one minute and a half please just a brief reflection Maybe he's not here anymore, so if he comes back, we will ask the question again. But that leaves you, Oscar, with one minute, 45 seconds. And I need to add something else. 
add something to what we have been speaking about because the question of Ramon also uh, awoke some reaction. So, as you represent the university sector in Latin America, maybe it's important to make some reflection around this from your side. Open science, open access, open data. Is it the same? Are these different things? What's the political impact? I know this question is big, but since afterwards, we will have the reflection of Dr. Ganesh in India, I'm sure has something to say. Maybe you can help me to begin to that. Well, the three ideas after everything has been said and try, trying to be coherent with what Laudano has said, our mission is to make permanent pedagogy to elevate, to increase, extend the discourse that have been many academic circles that have been working on open science and even in decision makers and governments in the institutions, they still, there is still a lack of knowledge on the topic and therefore in the Latin American Caribbean space, uh, as our, Nicolas was saying before and with the support of the task that we're doing with Oberal, we need to offer that platform so that we all have a basic knowledge of open science unified that allow all us to develop policies, public policies in our countries and policies of international cooperation with those looks, because otherwise we will get lost. In the end, we all have a men someone coordinating public policies and if there's no consensus of understanding in these dynamics the topic will be very difficult because all the things we have said so i'm just going to tell you the example of what colombia uh, showed when the colombian universities wanted to ask uh, access and cutting edge knowledge in terms of compression the universities today if universities should be because they have been working independently, each university would negotiate, for example, the access to databases independently. And when we had the opportunity to coordinate this in a collaborative manner, we jumped on to 53 million down to 2 million per year. So thanks to this exercise, it means that if we do make collaborative efforts and we forge regional alliances, it's a huge leap that we'll be able to, to make. So from both uh, national and international uh, partnerships, specifically in Latin America, we need to continue working in this sense on these cooperative baselines, um, thinking about the possibility of uh, having a set of principles. And three, I believe that is the great excuse universally, but specifically in Latin America, uh, we have the um, sustainable development goals, which could be uh, an advocacy platform towards open science in our academia. So thank this you is my so much, final Jose. idea. And thank you so much to all the panelists and apologies for the short time for, for discussion, but I am sure uh, we can keep, uh, we, if we save some time, we can keep discussing in the last in the last round. I would like to introduce all of you, Dr. Krishna Ganesh. He has been patiently waiting uh, and listening all this uh, discussion and the participation of our Indian colleague here, Dr. Ganesh, Dr. Ganesh is a reputed scientist and also the director of the Indian Institute of Education and Research, one of the prominent um, institutes of national importance um, in India regarding research and education. And uh, Dr. Ganesh, you have been listening perspectives from Europe that you might be probably familiar with and also from different Latin American countries. We would like very much to ask you for an intervention on three main points. The first one is the Indian perspective, the Indian perspective on tools for open access, but also the Indian per perspective of for the exercise of open science. Uh, science in India is important. India is a huge uh, producer of scientists and of scientists that are producing some elements that have been 
proven to be relevant worldwide and leading a discussion on patents going to Ramon's, Ramon's point, which uh, might be important to mention in the debate. So uh, if you, Dr. Ganesh, can give us your perspective on the debate you have listened, on the perspective of India, and on the perspective of India as a main producer of science, we would very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicholas, uh, for your kind words of introduction and the invitation. Uh, good morning in Latin America and good evening in Europe. Thank you for having me in this meeting. I'm very much happy to be part of this as this is an important issue. It's been a great education to hear the collective experience of panelists from different parts of the world. Let me start by stating that as a policy, India strongly supports open science. India ranks fifth in terms of publications or knowledge productivity. India's new science policy called Science, Technology and Innovation Policy of 2020, it mandates to make scholarly knowledge openly accessible to all. In India, the Department of Biotechnology and the Department of Science and Technology, uh, the main funding agencies, including Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, have adopted policies for open access and had also made available suitable infrastructure. We have already set up tools for open access for more than five years now. There are three main openly available resources in India. The first one called Shodh Ganga. You may have difficulty in pronunciation. Shodh means search. Ganga is our holy river. So it is searching in the holy river. It is set up as an open source digital repository software uh, called DSpace developed by MIT in partnership with Hewlett Packard. It uses the internationally recognized protocols and interoperability standards. Shodh Ganga provides a platform for research scholars to deposit their PhD thesis and make it available to the entire scholarly community in open access. The repository has the ability to capture, index, store, disseminate, and preserve the electronic thesis and dissertations submitted by the researchers. Established in 2011, this national repository of doctoral thesis now houses close to uh, 3.5 million PhD theses, 8521 synopsis submitted to more than 500 universities as of now, and it is managed by Information and Library Network of India, it's called as InfribNet. The second database is the National Virtual Library of India. This is an initiative of the Ministry of Human Resource Development, which is now called as Ministry of Education. This is as part of our national mission and education through information and communication technology. The library's pilot project is to develop a framework for a virtual repository of learning resources with a single window search facility. The collections are open access and multilingual in the form of documents, books, images, audio and video files and other forms. As of April 2022, the NDLI had more than 50 million digital items. And the third repository is called Science Central. It is India's centralized hosting service for all 42 institutional repositories of all institutions that are part of Department of Science and Technology and Department of Biotechnology, as well as a harvester service for those who have joined as repositories. A centralized harvester harvests data from all institutional repositories to support open access to publications from projects funded by Department of Science and Technology and Department of Biotechnology. 17 institutional repositories are hosted in this platform and the data are harvested from 42 more. The database currently has about 4,000 items of which 69% are from text records. Now, it's becoming obvious that open access publications are cited more frequently than non-open access publications and thus confer greater visibility on their authors. The new open access policy of India enunciated in the scientific and technology policy and very recently the new education policy of 2020, it op not only opens up scholarly knowledge but also access to research data and research infrastructure. While advances in information technology have led to an exponential growth of scientific literature, the cost of electronic journals has increased rapidly. 
Only a few institutions in the world have access to all the journals that they want. Many institutes are deprived of unfettered access to scientific knowledge because they cannot afford it. Sustainable open access policy should provide researchers not only access to high quality global peer reviewed research publications, but also an opportunity for them to contribute to such publications. The Indian central government allocates only 1% of country's GDP to research, but has roughly 900 universities and other research institutions of higher education, which this is not enough, and thus open access is an essential need. Importantly, India last year has formulated a new scheme called One Nation, One Subscription Formula for the whole country. This means the government will negotiate with leading publishers of science journals countrywide for a countrywide open access policy. This is similar to the German open access policy, but with the only difference in India is that the access to scholarly knowledge will not be restricted only to the research or academic community, but it provides it to all in India without having to pay for it. This new proposal is expected to replace the current norm where individual academic institutes or consortia of institutes subscribe to journals separately, thereby replicating the costs. But we know that there will be a huge practical difficulty in its both negotiation and implementation. While there is no problem in deposition of the whole or part of the thesis by scholars in a publicly available repository, the deposition of journal articles along with or without data in public repositories has some conflict. Still many researchers and research managers of the institutes or universities are not clear about the legal issues such as IPs and copyright protection of sharing the research outputs immediately. Importantly, the research evaluation and monitoring committees in the universities or institutes value publications in the, based on the journal impact factors. We know that many open access journals do not have high impact factors. This discourages many scientists to publish papers in open access journals. India ranks number 15 and 17 globally for open access journals and open access repositories with 317 journals in open access category and 98 repositories. Given the size of the country and our productivity, this is too small a number. India's proportion to open access publications is 23%, which is 7% below the world average of 30%. The annual growth rate of open access publications is around 18%. Out of 2.2 million Indian publications indexed in Scopus, only 0.3 million publications are published in open access journals. The contribution of India to open access journals is really dismal to only the extent of 1.9%. In spite of the governing bodies and institutions have made efforts to mandate researchers to adopt open access publishing and self-archiving, its implementation is still quite low among the Indian researchers. One of the reasons is that high author pay charges, which are disproportionately high for a country like India with high exchange rates. This makes it difficult for scientists to publish in open access quality journals. Funding agencies in India still do not provide financial assistance to authors for the payment of article processing charges, despite their mandate that research is to be deposited in open access repositories. India thus lacks a national financial open access policy and plans to implement a one nation, one subscription formula to provide open access to scientific literature to all its citizens. Open science concept must be carried right from the project funding and knowledge production to dissemination, affordability, and accessibility to open education as well. One of the main issues I see is the quality control, right from knowledge production to the quality of database. If a large amount of information of low quality is freely available, it is not only useless for many people, but it leads to generation of more low quality follow up this output. How to validate the data available in so many free repositories? A big thinking is needed on this issue. In a country like India and in Latin America, Africa and South Asian countries where researchers cannot afford subscription model, open science, open access is most desirable, but both funding to the researchers 
and quality assurance of available data is the essence. Generally, it is felt that when you publish by paying, it is not quality science. This is the common view in many researchers in India. This opinion needs to be mended. Lastly, I am the chief editor of an open access journal from American Chemical Society, ACS Omega, which was launched in 2016. Being the chief editor of an open access journal, I had to struggle a lot initially to attract quality publications from established authors. With non-compromising quality maintenance and high standards of peer reviewing, it has now become respectable and with, a, with respect to competitive journals and publishing more than 4,000 manuscripts annually at country specific APC rates and it has overtaken some of the well-known competitors. So I realized what it takes to succeed in open access publication. With modern publishing technology, with most of the costs for publication going in software employability, rapid production and publication, artificial intelligence based search tools in reviewer database, plagiarism check, etc., are all part of the standard softwares and this adds to the cost of publishing by the journals. I must emphasize that the whole enterprise of publishing next to authors and next to authors, reviewers play a very, or play a vital and important role. Very few journals offer incentives for reviewers for quality checking. As Plan S is rolling, journals are struggling to balance the open access content with subscription content by launching different levels of access for publications such as green, gold, et cetera. Finally, open science, open access, open data, et cetera, will certainly bring down plagiarism and increased ethics knowledge as the material is available freely to readers and authors cannot get away by unethical means of publication. At present, I'm not sure how much of India's databases and depositories are accessible for regional uh, in the region, such as South Asian countries. Science academies and funding agencies of these countries must get together to have both deposition and access to each of those databases. I'm an active author of research papers. I have been part of committees for funding and I'm heading an institution which constantly struggles to get library funds for pay, paying for the faculty publication in open access journals and also an editor of an open access journal. I feel all need to be involved in finding a satisfactory solution that enables the researchers to contribute more to open science. I must laud the efforts of Latin American countries and Europe for coming together in forums such as this to promote open science to the true spirit of UNESCO resolution. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ganesh, for your intervention and to, for drawing us the different problems and challenges uh, that India is facing and also the, the invitation to work together in tackling these problems in Latin America and in Europe, the invitation that I want to extend to India as well, because at the end of the day, this cannot be done uh, by, let's say, uh, having regions talking separately, but by promoting a real uh, interregional political dialogue both on open science and open access, which as soon as we reach the end of the, the general discussion, it seems to me clear that there are two different, two different uh, issues. One, it's very much related to the professional career of researchers and to the tools to conduct research. And the other one is much more related to a more complex political discussion as we can be, uh, as we can see in the chat by some of the the comments by Ignasi and our colleague from the European Commission regarding the discussion of intellectual property and, uh, and the exercise of open open science. With this uh, note and this enormous challenge, uh, I leave my colleague Anna the even bigger challenge to make one question from the public to all of you that should be answered in no more than two minutes. Anna. Okay, this is pretty difficult, uh, also because of the nature of the, of the diversity of, of questions. The first one I can answer by myself. The question was whether the recordings of those two virtual dialogues will be available. Of course, they will. Uh, we will uh, publish them as soon as, as the dialogues are finished 
in our communication platforms on behalf of the EULAC Foundation, for example, on our um, um, YouTube channel. But this will be communicated to you because we will also send you a link for evaluating um, those sessions. And uh, together with the link, you will be provided uh, with, with the links to the uh, projections and the recordings. Then there was a general question to all of the panelists, whether they were willing to share the contact data of them or their institutions in order to make a follow up um, on a bilateral level. So if you wish to share your contact data, just please feel free to write them in the chat. Then there was a question that was partly already answered by Ms. Atsrilevich. Uh, the question was whether there were um, alternatives to the DOY, and Ms. Atsrilevich already answered, yes, there, there was ARK and HANDEL. And the follow-up question to this question was whether those two um, uh, were accepted by regional Latin American ind indices. So, I think Ms. Atsrilevich can answer this very quickly in, in a short answer. Then there was another question, I think it was directly also to something that was mentioned in the intervention of Ms. Atsrilevich. You also mentioned um, that there was the need not only for um, human resources and uh, their training, but also for new profiles of human resources in terms of uh, being able to attend um, and to implement open science um, policies. So the question was, uh, where could those trainings be given? Uh, which kind of institutions could, could, could um, implement such trainings? And my additional question to this would be, which would be the necessary qualifications ex and experiences um, which would make, make up such a new profile. Um, perhaps, uh, Ms. Asrilevich, you could also attempt this question very briefly. Um, then there was um, one question. Um, uh, see. The, uh, I, I'm just uh, brief, briefly summarizing all the questions, okay. and then you will have some, some few minutes to, to, to respond. Um, I will switch to Spanish now. Um, there was a comment by Ms. Mirta Brites, es excelente el acceso abierto, pero que hacer con tanta información? Yeah, open access is excellent, but what can we do with so much information only to be in the rankings as university? So uh, if it's only worth for that. The, Feel free uh, to, to, to answer to this to this question. Finally, uh, before um, Ramon Torrent reacted um, uh, very considerably on the issue of uh, patents, um, there was a question by one of the attendees, and I think this this question inspired Ramon to formulate his question. It was also a question formulated in Spanish, which I will read now. One of the problems that we have, young researchers, is uh, limiting for patent, innovative patent transfer. How can we, you support us to advance and so that research in Latin America changes its landscape? Discuss this briefly. Um, and there were already two, um, two important answers to the question of um, uh, Ramon, uh, Ramon asked, um, I haven't heard a word on patents or con COVID vaccines patents. Aren't we a bit self-complacent by talking about open science while forgetting this? Um, patents are not covered by the notion of, of open science. Are we really talking about open science or are we limiting ourselves to open access to academic publications, which is quite different? Limiting the scope of our action and reflection is understandable and acceptable, but hiding the limits maybe is not. And there were two, quest two answers already. Um, Dr. Ignacy Lavastida answered, I would like to remark um, that one of the pillars of open science is the public engagement. We need to involve citizens in the research process 
as we have already begun with the real citizen science projects. In health research, the engagements of pa patients is essential, as we can see in some of those citizen science projects. And Ali Lopez de San Roman answered to um, Ramon, I would say the broader discussion on the relationship between and open science is extremely relevant. The importance of an adequate management of intellectual property as a way to enable and foster open science. The discussion on open science frequently focuses on copyright, but other on IPRs, such as patents. This should also be brought into the analysis and discussion. I will now give first the floor to Paula Atzililevich, and I please those who want to respond, please be very brief, briefly so that we can finish up very quickly. Well, I think Anna was asking me to mainly to speak about profiles and training. And there we all can contribute in every different field is welcome to generate new profiles, <clears throat> be it in the field of libraries, publishing houses, research groups, areas managing science in universities or the scientific bodies. We do not need a single profile for this. We need communicators, publishers, researchers trained in data management and also in collaboration with the citizens to do citizen science. And also we need IT profiles working in these teams. The change that we need in this sense is so big that we begin to speak about interdisciplinary teams with different roles, with different drivers and also different stakeholders within the same institutions also the different departments or isolated departments for these questions uh, are very damaging so we need to begin opening the teams of course uh, training strategies well, every single strategy we can think of, maybe careers for that, seminars, postgraduate seminars, webinars, whatever, that is useful to disclose this question. There was another one regarding persistent identificators, identificators and DOI. I think the DOI is not the, the only alternative. There are other indicators that are working quite well with that aim of identifying and accessing the contents. And it all depends on the possibilities of acquiring and financing a subscription to something like DOI or a cheaper one, or the possibility of self-managing ARC in our own local servers, be the national, regional, international, without <clears throat> regardless of the subscriptions. They work similarly, and they're not the only ones, and they're not excluding, so they're compatible between them. It all depends on the alternatives that we, each one of us needs, and they adjust to the needs of the very moment. So basically, that was it. Somebody else wants to answer one of the questions? Well, regarding the question of what to do with so much information, well, for me, in our opinion, the university rankings is not the main objective when it comes to having open access production. For me, it's the less interesting of all the reasons for having repositories and to group information. The reason for grouping information is to make it available for the community and also with added value tools. There are many things we can do today with technology beyond 
just offering them. We also need to, need to process information, uh, different processes that can generate tools that add value to that process and that allow the exploitation of that information for the community. So the main aim here is that we're speaking about research outcomes that have been funded with public funds and therefore need to be available for the public and be a public good. That's the main reason for us. And if you allow me to add something, uh, this information needs to be available to generate new knowledge without needing to re-research the same or looking for the same data to do uh, again research from a different perspective, but with the same base basic data. So to avoid duplicating efforts and wasting resources is one of the main objectives too. Thank you very much. I don't see more um, hands raised. So Oscar Dominguez, please. Well, I wouldn't like to leave without adding that this is a task that needs to be developed still in Latin America. And spaces like this are inviting us to that. And the platform of links, uh, you know, Ana, that many of the researchers do not know about this debate in the Latin America region. And it's worth that they uh, get this knowledge. Look at the questions. They made questions about what happened with the COVID topics. They asked us if this is only to make a, an expert space. No, it's not about that. It's all about doing a more understandable exercise and the reflection of Lautaro is precisely in that sense that knowledge needs to be available for the communities and societies. That's the basic uh, objective of this open science in Latin America. So thank you very much, Alia. Yes, well, very quickly, I think that the question of Ramon Torrent is very important in all discussions that we're doing, we're having on open science, and that is about intellectual property and the role it plays when it comes to facilitating or uh, being an obstacle and also empowering the research institutions. Uh, until recently, we didn't know very much about uh, author rights. And now we have much more information of the different licenses that can be applied to publications, to data, to software, copyright, uh, all for rights or intellectual property is a very important part of that debate. We need to have a proper management of the uh, intellectual property rights and also to have a proper uh, legal framework to facilitate that research. And within all that debate, we also need to uh, extend other uh, pro intellectual property rights like patents, for example. So this is a crucial element within the debate around open science, the role of intellectual property and how both are intertwined so interweaved so people speak about intellectual property protection and then open science is different from that so if we think about intellectual property from its origins it's all about how to disclose information how to make it accessible so we need to go back to that original concept and link it to the debate on open science i think that's crucial thank you Thank you, Dr. Lavastida. Yes, I only wanted to add that it's not only a problem of intellectual property policies, but it's also that other policies affecting the daily life of our institutions are sometimes an obstacle for open science. For example, we have a problem in Europe now with a policy aimed to better control commercial pla platforms. We think that's positive, but in a collateral way, it's affecting us to all uh, public infrastructure platforms such as repositories. So it's important that those making policies, even though they may seem not to affect the institutions such as universities and research centers, that they consider this because otherwise these will be policies aimed on one direction, but they they're an obstacle to the disclosure of knowledge. 
Iris, do you want to have a last comment? Microphone. Seems not. Um, okay, so I would like to invite um, Dr. Adrian Bonilla to just make a very brief wrap up of, of this wonderful discussion of the first um, virtual dialogue. And from, from the, the outward, I invite everyone uh, who participated today to, 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 to also join us tomorrow, because this, this is thought as, as one single event, but divided into two parts, which are interconnected. Thank you, Anna. Indeed, a very, very brief comment on the presentations of uh, this afternoon uh, about some guidelines and general topics that we were talking about uh, this afternoon in Europe and this morning in Latin America. Let me say it in Spanish. There were some important ideas that uh, repeat some con concepts on the debate of open science, one that has to do with asymmetries. We highlighted the idea of historic inequalities. Another one that I believe is important when we speak about the instruments is the management of scientific journals, especially in the field of humanities, but also in the field of hard sciences, so to say, in Latin America. Uh, university journals are mainly open access journals. Most of them have open access. And this is due to the fact that in Latin America, such in other parts of the world, including those where the laws of pro uh, intellectual property rights is, is very uh, solid, stringent. So scientific research is not mainly financed with public funds. And this makes us to think that production public fund with public funds need to be a public good. And very important element is that in all cases, universities are the main characters of the thematic of open science because they are the center where the knowledge is produced. The image of moving uh, towards the subscription model, towards an open access model, is an image that I truly, uh, it truly evokes the current needs, especially because the subscription level doesn't finance research. Research is financed not thanks to uh, scientific journal subscriptions. So, this allows us to understand today what we're currently hearing with uh, decision policymakers in Europe and uh, Caribbean and, and Latin America. Yeah. I mean, from the public perspective, there is consensus in advancing towards the open science model. The, the obstacles are, are, don't, are not located in public policies, but in different places in agencies which can condition this general uh, process. So looking back at the experience explained by Professor Ganesh, these this tools, virtual libraries, databases, etc., that exist in India is massive. They are uh, data harvesting holds millions and millions of items. Items in Latin America, we have the Flac Claxo Redalic experience. In Europe, we have a myriad of databases of open science. And it seems that the tendency is going towards the tools that would allow a better access. So simply, I would like to conclude by saying that maybe with this debate, there are several topics that will help us keep advancing. This multilingualist or multilingual conception that makes universal the needs of uh, disclosure of knowledge and knowledge uh, production. We do have the necessary tools to produce multilingualism and to uh, generate 
this image that evokes the need of having this lingua franca. A lingua franca can coexist with a multilingual context and interregionality rather than a global situation, a reality of what's happening, <laughs> because it gives as a perspective of diversity, of diversity and uh, construction um, information. And when it comes to the answer that scientists, uh, the, from the human, uh, from biology, scientific, uh, et cetera, arenas allow, and the responsibility of, um, of the, the institutions of people generating knowledge towards the community that allows that this knowledge is being financed. I mean, the link, the relationship of universities, uh, research centers, research researchers, together with the needs of the communities where they, uh, where they work. So this is how I would finish this first part and tomorrow hopefully we shall continue with this wonderful and fruitful debate thank you so much to all of you for having been here today thank you see you tomorrow thank you very much bye bye